Uh, it's pretty damn cold out today, so that only means one thing. Why don't we try starting our race bike? Maybe. I don't know. Um, it's finally time. I was out here Friday night, last night, and just had some tunes cranking and decided that I'd get the uh, fresh motor back in. As you can see, there's no longer anything on that bench. Um, old motor's actually sitting over there. So, um, well, I shouldn't say old motor, just the other motor. Um, yeah, I got the batteries charging right now. They're right there. And then I got to... I got to put oil in it and prime it and then I forgot there was one part that I had to make and uh, it's nothing major it's just something that's been kind of on my mind that I've been wanting to do for a bit super simple little part it's more of a cosmetic thing than anything but I'll show you what I got going on there and then you know we'll get going and maybe getting this thing fired up so if you take a peek down in there you'll notice I don't have a cam position sensor um, normally there's one in there just plugging that hole I don't actually run a functioning cam position sensor um, I've had too many failures with them, so I don't run that on this system. So I do a batch fire deal that just ignores that that was ever there. But what I wanted to do is take this here factory sensor. I plunked a hole in the middle of this uh, note card and then made a template, which ended up being that right there, which turned into that right there. So now I'll take the O-ring off that sensor. That'll lay in. There's a little recessed spot in that valve cover where this sits. So that thin little O-ring seal will sit down in the valve cover. And then my new block off plate that I made will cap that thing right off just nice like that. And then obviously I got to use, you know, fancy button heads and, you know, kind of rough that thing up and make it look like a billet or something. But I literally made that um, with a grinder. It's just 3 16th flat aluminum. So I'm going to install that, and then we'll get going on getting this motor primed. And through the magic of television, there it is. My cam sensor block off plate. Uh, like I said, I could have just left a factory sensor in there to keep that hole plugged, but I just kind of wanted something a little nicer looking, and it doesn't look like I got just some random sensor that's not plugged in, which is exactly what it was. Now, we need to... I'm going to pull that clutch out and I'm going to finally go through that so this is the time to do it and then I'm going to actually put oil in it and prime it and then we'll get ready to fire it. Okay, update. This is where we're at. Um, remember when I had all this apart when I was doing the motor and I never took the clutch or nothing apart because I knew I was going to have to do this at some point and it was just easier to leave it all together when I was doing the full assembly and kind of come back in and get it apart like I was doing regular clutch maintenance. Um, the only thing is with a you know, 1000, whatever, older bikes is kind of the same way. The oil pump is behind the clutch basket. It's actually driven off a of gear on the back of the clutch basket. Now, normally you could pull off the water pump or in my case, the block off plate on the other side. And you could go in there with the tool, spin the pump and prime it. But because I don't run a water pump or anything on that side, that shaft is actually cut off. So it's not in there trying to wobble or nothing. I can't do that. So what I do is on this side, I just take a piece of welding wire and run it through the drive pin hole on the oil pump. And this is just silicon bronze wire. It's pretty easy to bend. And I just twist it up so it's nice and straight, nice, nice good distance. And then just chuck it up in the drill. And then I'll spin the drill over, spin the pump, prime it. Um, it actually works pretty slick by using, it's kind of a softer, silicon bronze is a softer wire. And then having the drill back a little ways, I can, uh, you know, not get a big old warble and a wobble going on. Um, this is definitely not any kind of way you should do this, and don't ever listen to anything I do. But uh, it works, and I didn't have to, you know, buy some fancy tool or make something. So just a real quick deal to prime it. But we got, I got one battery in right now. That's enough to just run the ECU, and we're just watching oil pressure. It's red right now because obviously it's zero, and tire temp is 52 degrees but you can see you know everything is you know intake air temp 57 coolant temp 46 so it's actually right around just getting up to about 55 degrees in the shop right now so that's all reading about what it should read but what I'm going to do is watch that oil pressure and I'm going to spin the drill you ain't got to spin it real fast to build a little pressure
You can actually hear it kind of sucking oil there. It's pushing the, uh, pushing the clutch shaft out because the transmission shaft is getting pressurized. So we'll just push that back in there. And we'll watch the gauge this time. About 60 pounds, just spin it with the drill. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna crank the motor over and do it one more time after I put a little drain pan under here. But yeah, it's just that easy to prime it. So you saw me spin that around, got it primed. I uh, put the oil pump drive gear back on now. And cool thing about you know priming the motor through you know this side is I can actually see oil coming out of the rod bearing. So I know we got oil definitely going to the bottom end of the motor. So now I will go ahead and put all this back together. I'm gonna switch over back to a uh, pump gas tune because yes, believe it or not, I can run dual fuel. And this is full of pump gas right now. So we're gonna get it running on pump and then I'll probably switch it over to methanol and uh, put a meth tune in it and let it run for a bit. All right, we got the clutch all back together. I uh, topped off the oil. I gapped plugs, put some plugs in it. I spun the motor over just to make sure cranking. I had, you know, oil pressure still. Um, I thought I had my gasoline map in the dash um, all last year, basically I ran it on methanol and I must not have saved it because I had to go get the laptop and take it back out of the laptop, and load it back in there. So I have my gasoline map in there now, and this is just 93 pump. And what I'm going to do is get to where this little glare here. I just want to circulate some fuel and make sure we got pressure and that everything is kind of cool yet. So I'm going to go back here and bring up a dashboard. So we got everything down here. Uh, see, where's my fuel pressure? Over here, right here, fuel pressure. Oop, you're not looking at what I'm looking at. So I got, brought up my little dashboard here. Fuel pressure's over here because when I go to activate the pump, um, I won't be able to see this screen on the dash. So what I'm going to do, go in here, go in here, scroll down to fuel pump. Fuel pump there, and I'll go over here, and then we'll go to test output. So we'll turn the pump on. So I got the pump running. We'll just let it run for a minute, kind of. Circulating. We're good there. I'll go check our pressure quick. And up here, about 46 pounds of fuel pressure. That should drop a little bit once it's actually running. So we'll go ahead and probably get ready to fire this up now. 
turn off that output, we'll go back to the dash. And I'm going to double check a couple things and then we're going to get it fired up. I already found one freaking oil leak. It was my cam chain tensioner is leaking. For whatever reason, that's a new gasket that's leaking out the bottom bolt. So I'll have to address that, but uh, so far so good. All right, let's wrap her up and then get her fired up. So I decided before I got too far, I was gonna figure out what was leaking oil up here just under priming conditions. And what I didn't realize, and I was just probably going a little too quick when I did it, that that gasket on that cam chain tensioner only goes on one way. I'll show you what I mean. Um, this isn't the gasket that's in there. This is just one like it. You can see how this gasket is actually kind of, it's offset that way a little bit. I had it flipped this way so that the oil passage that's right here for the factory hydraulic cam chain tensioner was actually shooting oil out here, whereas it should have been captured there. So just a stupid mistake on my part. Well, I've been out here most of the day messing around with this thing. Um, haven't been working real fast, but uh, I took a break. I'm kind of picking up here where I left off. I took a break, went inside and got some food, came back out, and I'd just been tinkering. Um, like I said, I, I fixed that one oil leak. I found another one on the other side. I'll show you that quick. So over here, I run a uh, uh, oil pressure regulator to feed the turbo. And the return line, the bypass line, was actually loose. And I couldn't figure out, because that line's black, I was getting a little drip down here. And I couldn't figure out where it was coming from because everything over in this area was dry. Well, that's when I noticed right where the jacketing kind of meets the hose here. It was just a little puddle. And I touched that line and it was loose. So, again, i just making little mistakes. But um, I've been getting... Uh, I didn't show the first startup just because I was just working slow and I didn't feel like filming. It just hey, get you know get the music going and get cranking and um, I got it fired up. It's just running on 93 octane right now. It is tricky trying to get that to work. Uh, it does do it, but these injectors are huge. That pump is huge. This is a methanol setup, but it will run. I don't. I wouldn't make a pass on like race gas. Um, I just don't know if I could really dial it in that well. Um, possibly, eh. But it will fire up, idle, run, rev, all that uh, on pump. You know, pump 93. But I'd be willing to bet I could probably put, like, some C16 in here. And I could probably actually make a map with this fuel system, you know. Wouldn't be ideal just because the injectors are real big. But this ECU does such a good job controlling all that that I probably, yeah, I could maybe make it work. But... Um, that's not really what the intent is. It's a methanol setup, so we're just doing some heat cycles and checking for leaks and going over things on the pump gas. And I'll do a quick start up here so you guys can see it actually does run. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So right now I do have the laptop is hooked up. That's why the dash is powered up right now. Um, I've been taking little data logs and making little changes. Uh, it's, like I said, you get into the fuel table here. And some of them numbers is pretty tiny. And you start getting down into low control like that. Um, that's where the, uh, you know, fine tuning comes in. But we'll get it fired up here. So it uh, it runs. I'll probably do a few more heat cycles on it. What do I got? I think the temp tempo's starting to get up there. Yeah, she's pretty warm right now. So we'll leave her be. Now it's uh 
time to just look things over and get on going with another project I got going on in here. There's another story coming up. Well, I think I'm going to wrap it up for now. Um, it was a good day, I think. You know, I started out last night just, you know, putting that motor in there and she fires up and runs pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with how things turned out. Like all the little detail stuff and just like even the stupid shit like painting the motor, painting the valve cover. Um, I'm just really kind of happy with how it all turned out. Um, whether it stays together all season or not, I don't know. I'm going to try kind of leaning on it, I think. But, um, yeah, for now, it's good to go. I think I'm just going to keep, while the weather's, you know, it's still cold and crappy and the track don't open for a while. Um, I'm just going to keep heat cycling it. I'll probably, I'll probably get three or four oil changes before it ever gets to the track. So, uh, before I go in the house tonight, I think actually I might dump the oil on it now because it's been, I heat cycled it probably four or five times just today already. Sorry, thought I, thought I saw something. But, uh, yeah, um, gaining ground. So I'm going to close this one out and stick around for the next one. i got a few more projects and things I want to build for this thing yet before we hit the track. So we'll see you next time.